This has been Alcoa Presents. Alcoa also brings you, on another network, the award-winning Alcoa Theater. Both shows by Aluminum Company of America and its distributors from coast to coast. Brooke Taylor speaking for Alcoa. Square. Ah, uh, tall trees. She uh, is not well. She has a uh, ache here. You are witnessing the recreation of an actual experiment in extrasensory perception. It is called psychometry. Peter Herkos, one of the psychic marvels of the 20th century, is in the laboratories with Dr. Lars Lindstrom, MD. Somehow, by merely touching an object, Herkos can tune in to whoever else has also touched that object. Now, if such a process could be understood, the riddle of mind over matter could also be understood. A riddle as basic as the mystery of life itself. Alcoa presents a new and unusual kind of television program that takes you just beyond the world in which you live. Alcoa presents Aluminum. From the world's leading producer, Aluminum Company of America, who creates new and unusual uses of this wondrous metal for the world in which you do live. And now, John Newland takes you one step beyond. You're right about the psychiatrist. Bad. Uh, she went to the doctor May 7th, not early April. She thought of it a month earlier and she should have gone. She would have saved herself an awful lot of suffering. And you'd be 100% right, huh? Your average uh, for the series of tests so far is uh, pretty respectable, Peter. Eight correct statements out of ten. Statistically, uh, the odds against that uh, are at least one million to one. Of course, I told you. Dr. Van der Helst and Holland said that I cannot do what I do with tricks. And now you see for yourself. Mind if we wait a bit before handing out testimonials? And so began phase two. In the next series of tests, Dr. Lindstrom set out to remove whatever physical senses might account for Herkus's power. He now began a psychometrization of objects seen, but not touched. I see uh, monuments telling of history. Hands off. What are you trying to do to me? What we agree to do. See how good you are when you can't touch. In the box, I see a, an ornament. No, 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 no. Not an ornament. It's uh, uh, writing. Uh, not writing. Uh, lines like that go this way and that that way, like a drawing. Here, wait. I I show you. Uh, like so. So, so, so. What is that? Looks like Egyptian hieroglyphs. No, what do I know of that? Let's see. <laughs> I'm remarkable. I'm, I mean, without even knowing and without even touching. Two errors. Two errors? I don't believe it. But listen, that's still fantastic. There, there could have been anything in that box. Dog collar, a toothpick, a key ring. Two errors. 
This is called a stroboscopic light. The flickering reduces the area between the conscious and subconscious. Whatever it does, it feels fine. I received this letter this morning. I haven't opened it yet. Tell me what's in it. I see a harbor beyond it, a city with big buildings. The city is New York. Letters from New York. Uh, it's coming closer. The big building. There's one building. The letter is from the building. From a man, 76 years old, white hair. I see everything. Doctor, I tell you, I see everything. Why? Why what? Why should the strobe light make any difference? Well, I don't know, but it does. Uh, right now, I, everything is gone. The light flickers, you flicker. What's wrong with that? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we should be celebrating. Then I proved it. I, I'm finished. The ultimate purpose of our work is to try to understand what extrasensory perception is. Well, maybe we are getting a little close. Then I think you should be happy. All by ourselves. Right here in this little room. We may have just dumped man's deepest hopes into the garbage can. Instead of a psychic marble, maybe you are no more than a radio receiver. A what? Why should the stove light change anything? All it is is, is an electrical impulse. What's ESP? An electric spark? I don't care what you call it. When I touch things, I know. And when I don't touch things, I know. Put on the light. We got some more. You can build yourself the electrical marvel, AM and FM, and go back on the stage. I'm sorry. Peter, science has reduced everything in this world to 92 elements. Everything except one thing, the human mind. If what we've got up here, if what we know and feel can be analyzed chemically, then... I can't rationalize it. But I want it to be more than an electric spark. Infinitely more. I guess that doesn't make sense. No, it, it makes sense to me, Doctor. There is one way to prove if we're on the right track or not. How? You won't like it, Peter. What I'm going to turn on is called the Faraday cage. Why does it glow like that? That's 250,000 volts of electricity. 250,000 volts? Oh, you'll be quite comfortable and safe inside. Me? But you're joking. No. Oh, oh no, Doctor. Oh, no. Uh, oh. It won't hurt you, Peter. I never heard of 250,000 volts helping anyone. The current is only on the outside. Come on, I'll show you. Come on. Sit down. Now, what is this supposed to prove? If extrasensory perception is merely an electrical wave, they used to score zero on the matching test. Because when the power goes on, no electrical impulse can penetrate these walls. Right. With 250,000 volts, I... Will you stop worrying about it? You just sit there. Open your collar. Relax. This is the way you work the intercom. Hmm? I've brought you a set of objects. Here. I have a... 
similar set outside. And when I point at one object, you tell me which one it is. Okay? Good luck. One moment. How do I get out of here? I'll open it for you. Well, why can't I open it myself to get out? Well, you might get panicky and try to leave before, before the power is down to zero. And uh, at that moment, you touch the outside metal. Goodbye, Peter Hyrkos. Uh, bye, Peter Hyrkos. I'm turning on the power now. Once the cage is electrically charged, it remains hot until I pull the switch. Want to start? I guess so. You relaxed? How can I be relaxed in here? What am I pointing at now? Peter! Uh, butterfly. And now? The nook. The what? The nook. Oh, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, uh... I still think in Dutch. Uh, nope, is button. And now, extrasensory perception was not merely an electrical impulse. As a matter of record, shielding Peter Herkos from electrical impulses increased his power enormously. Bullets! Peter? Where have you been? Let's do the movies, Doctor. That's every night this week. <laughs> All right, come on in. I want to meet somebody. No, oh. nine, I... Uh, Peter Herkos, Mr. Kibbe. We were just discussing... Uh, no. Yes. Not, uh, Mr. Kibbe. A policeman. Well, I warned you. What is this? Uh, Captain Kibbe is an old friend of mine. He heard about you and he phoned. Your work with the French police in that Dijon case is simply beyond belief. What I mean, how you could tell that that little girl... Peter, the captain wonders if... if Yes, I know what the captain wondered. No, I am sorry, I don't work with anyone anymore. Just the laboratory. Nothing else. Yes, it's a nearing. I see trees, many trees, raining. The, gr the ground... Uh, is wet, raining all night. A muddy road. The woman. Sh the woman is dead. The policeman gave it to you. Peter. You tricked me. All right, Peter. Okay, I'm going to turn it off now. I'll never trust you again! Listen to me. No, I won't listen! For the 20 seconds it takes for the power to drop to zero, you're going to have to! I have Captain Kibbe in the laboratory with me. I just surprised! You know so much from the earring, you must know the terrible way she was killed. Open! If anybody had ever told me that I would be begging someone like you to help me solve a murder case, I... But I am begging. Mr. Herkus, if you could have seen the condition of her body... I'm not going to apologize this time. I doubt that God gave such a gift merely to entertain in theaters.
If you will give me the earring back, I'll be on my way. I'll help you if I can. But I'm going to need something from the men who killed. But there's nothing. We went over the area a hundred times. Nothing. The woman's body. Cremated. I, I must have something. It was here. Ah, this is a car. <clears throat> I see uh, many lights, colored lights. Red light is stop light. She's sitting behind the wheel, and the car is stopping. The man... Wait. Yes. This door, the man gets in. I feel very strongly. He has a gun. Connor's woman was strangled, Mr. Hercus. Yeah, yeah, I say this. He has the gun to frighten. There are no bullets. Go on, Peter. His mind is uh, sick. What else about him? He lives old building. One eight. One eight. A hotel with Dirty curtains. There must be a hundred hotels like that in town. Yeah, but I... I feel strongly. One eight. One eight what? I don't know. Fogel. Yeah, Fogel. The man's name. Fogel. Fogel? Peter. In English, there are two names. Vogel and Fogel. One with an F and one with a V. Which one do you mean? The V. V. Vogel. Yeah, yeah, I say this. And already hear the laughter in the police locker room. Right there. Four days later, 37 flea traps, flop houses, side street hotels later, Peter Herkos and party arrive in the dingy lobby of the Royal Arms Hotel. Vogel is living here. Now, wait a minute, mister. I ought to know who lives here and who don't. Peter, you said number 18. This is 127. Where is he going? Hey, is he crazy?
guys doing here? Open it up. There's no Mr. Vogel in this room. Open it up. Don't you cops need a search warrant anymore? Open it up. Just as a favor to me. Tell me what's happening at least. Yeah. His mind is like an animal's. It's filled with hate and fear. Women fill him with hate, with fear. I, he's, he's very sick. Who's sick? I thought my room rent was paid till next Saturday. I tried to stop them, Mr. Bird. This is the captain of detectives and the other two guys. I don't know who they are. Did you ever use the name Vogel? Vogel? The name's Bird. Like in Robin Redbreast, Walter Bird. Any identification? Sure. Where do you work? What do you do? The bowling alley on South Beacon. Just came from there. Long, hard day. Tell your friend it's not polite to stare. But his name's not Vogel. Well, that's for sure. Yeah, he's the one. What one? Who is this kook? Buddy, stare at something else for a while, huh? Would it be too nosy to ask you gentlemen what this is all about? Peter described how he looked like. There are a million guys that look like that. Oh, thanks, loads. But I'll run a routine check anyway. Well, you'll find I'm a real bad boy when it comes to parking tickets. What's he up to now? Hey, what is he, a hound dog or something? Come on, Rover, knock off. <laughs> How do you do? The name's Bird, like in Robin Redbreast, and please give me back my hand. What have you done? Let go, will you? That woman in the picture was not the only one. What's the matter with this guy? Make him let go. There was much more. Let go Many my hand. Many more women. Let go my hand. Yeah. Peter. Yeah? Sometimes in the laboratory, you'd think in Dutch. Do you remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's bird in Dutch? Bird is uh, Vogel. She just laughed. <laughs> and this is the real Peter Herkos. Peter, we understand that you spent a total of two and a half years in the research laboratories of a medical doctor that we call Lars Lindstrom, right? That's correct. And the research still go on here and in Europe. That's marvelous. Actually, a, an important paper was recently read on this very same subject, on this research, before a group of scientists at the, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and will soon be published, right? So long as I live, I offer myself for any test, any studies, under any conditions that scientists may impose. Good. With the rare gift of a few men like Peter Herkos, mankind, ever so slowly, moves toward an understanding of what we human beings are, what we really are in the universal scheme. <laughs>